So, this is the another project that we are going to discuss. We have discussed two projects in the last session. In this section, we will discuss three more projects. All these are the small projects in the same category like, but as you see as we go from uh, one session of projects to next session of projects, the complexity will be little bit increased. So, all the projects that you have we have discussed, we have learned about in the last session, it is simple to solve, but again uh, the complexity will be little bit uh, increased. Now, in these projects, we will again consider that the different flavor of the Java programming can be used, utilized so that you can uh, really uh, learn uh, much more about while you are involved in working with the project. Now, I will just discuss about the third project here drawing images on canvas. Probably you have already so, uh, have an idea about how the uh, scribble uh, can be there so that user can draw some image using mouse pointer or like this but here it is not exactly the same thing, it is bit different thing, but here the idea will be little bit in a phased manner and then you can think about it, but if you can solve this problem uh, definitely the lot of other different uh, aspects of the programming like say multi level inheritance, polymorphism, graphics, applet will be covered. So, this project aims so that it can cover all these concepts in Java programming. Now, let us have the idea about this project. Now, this project is basically drawing an image, the image is basically consists of the several geometrical objects, a point may be a geometrical object, a line may be a triangle, a circle, an ellipse or any polygon or some rectangle square like this one. Not only these geometrical objects, they can be filled with different colors, different style, their border or line can be also different color, different style like like like. So, this is basically the way a geometrical objects can be drawn and again if you see an image, an image is nothing but a collection of several geometrical objects placed in their appropriate positions. So, this way it basically completes an image. So, here is an idea about that how the different geometrical objects can be defined so that you can use to draw an image of your own. So, for these things our plan is to create a class called the geo object class. We will discuss about the class structures in details when we will discuss about how to solve this problem, how to uh, deal with this project. And second thing is that if you create the geometrical object using these geometrical objects, how you can create an image that can be stored as a class structure. And whenever an object is created of that class, that means an image will be created and that image can be again on execution it can display on the screen or it can be stored, later on you can use it, redraw these things, this one. And in the final stage of this project, you have to do the animation. So, a circle if it is there, which is present there, initially it is a static, but you can move it. That means, circle can move from left to right or top to bottom from one any direction to another direction like this one. So, all those things also can be done. So, this project is basically we will do all these things together. Now, let us see how step by step we can do towards this project implementation. So, first thing that you should have the repository that all the objects of their different type and how to draw everything should be defined in your own class declaration. You can give the name of this class as a geo object. Now, once this class is declared, so this class and then an object of this class can be used to create your own image. Here is an example about how an image will look like. As you see in this example, uh, an image consists of many structures, say suppose this is the one rectangle and this is also another rectangle, but the difference from this rectangle to re this rectangle, their positions, their style, here for example, the line by which this rectangle is drawn with no color but the filling is some other color, here filling is different color and this is a circle, this is also another circle. So, this the different geometrical objects composed an image. So, this is basically we can say that image. Now, these geometrical objects can be created by using uh, any one class which you have already defined belongs to the geo object class and geo object class can be obtained by means of multi level inheritance, multiple inheritance as the idea it is given there in the form of a inheritance tree. 
and such an image therefore, is a in the form of a class not a bits form or image or do not a dot uh, uh, jpg form or P pdf form or img form like the or png form, it is just simply a class. And this class can be executed, so that you can see the image actually. So, this is the idea about uh, the painting an image on a canvas and the canvas here is basically a frame or panel you can think about in that case a little bit AWT needs to be followed here. Now, so this is the idea about how an image can be created. Our next idea about that how the movement of an object on the can canvas can be added into this one. So, this is the second phase of your project. Here you can create any one image initially you should consider only one simple image may be a circle. Now, animate the movement of the image. Now, here you can we have already known about the banner applet that we have discussed while we are discussing about uh, applet. So, there we have also made it. So, the movement can be achieved by means of repeated use of update and repent method that is there. So, I, I, I rather advise you to do it using an applet because it is easier later on the same thing also can be added into any frame or in a panel or in any other container class using uh, AWT or swing. And be better idea will be it is little bit difficult, but it is not as such so much difficult also that it is moving of a geometric object is easier, but moving an uh, composite object that means a group of object may be say one uh, circle and another box can move together. So, that is also can be done. So, if you do it is basically moving an object it is there. For example, you can draw a bar using say few straight line and then point and then dot like and then the same can be moved together. So, that it will appear an animation that a bar is moving like. So, this is the idea about moving an object on a image canvas and you, you, you really will be able to enjoy it if you can implement it, but it little bit patience and then uh, confidence is also required. Now, I will discuss about the control movement of an object. In the previous phase, you have declared the movement in one direction only, but here you can fix that okay, in this direction you can move. As a simpler version, you should take in a simple way that is a control movement in a specific direction as I have mentioned from right to left or left to right, top to bottom or bottom to left like this this. So, an image is anywhere then you can give an instruction an event can be generated. So, that if you click it then it will start moving and in a particular direction. So, here you can just think and applet uh, program for that and then view of the applet will look like this. So, this is basically the one area of the canvas we can say and this is basically the control area. So, if the user selects a up then what will happen this object will move up and then go there again come here. So, this way it is just in a movement the in this direction. On the other hand if it is the right then it will move from this direction to this direction and come here again this direction this direction and if you click again it will stop its moving. So, here uh, if so, if there are many other objects also you can select which objects you want to pursue the movement out of many objects there is some so objects can be selected there is a choice in this choice also it can you can give that movement of uh, few more. So, if you choice a circle then you can select left circle will move then another object may be ellipse and then move right. So, right will be there and so on so on. So, you can just simply uh, control the event handling mechanism here although the sim simple event ha handling mechanism is there because here uh, how many is the choice list and then this is the uh, four buttons are there and you have to just okay key a button handling mouse event handling routine needs to be implemented there. So, you can try it and then it will uh, give an idea about how uh, nice uh, program can be there which basically used for animation purpose also, but uh, this is uh, just a uh, just for the beginners. So, this is the, the fourth project in the today in this session second project, but altogether it is the fourth project that that is a secure message transmission. This is also a very interesting project. Now, you obviously this project needs certain what is called the technological concept. Again this project is good for the students who are from electronics, electrical and computer science background because little bit security aspect uh, learning is there. Security means how the cryptography, the encryption, 
decryption and all other methods are there. Now, let us see what are the skill set that you should have or the confidence level that you should have. You should be a good co core programmer that means, you know exactly good uh, Java programming syntax and others. Then GUI programming is also required, you have to develop certain graphical user interface windows is required and finally, you should have very good knowledge about the networking. So, it will blend all three things together in this projects. So, if you can implement these projects, so this project has its own value of course, and apart from this you will be able to have a good confidence level so far all these uh, key concepts in Java programming is concerned. Now, let us have the idea about these projects. Now, this project is basically as I told you uh, few technical things are involved uh, which I have highlighted here. You should have the encryption, decryption and then cryptographic key and then also you should have some other uh, uh, networking all these things that is there. Now, here is the what is the idea here? The idea is that uh, a message whatever it is there that can be encrypted, encrypted means it changed so that nobody can read it even open it they will not be able to get the meaning of this. So, this is the idea about the encryption and whenever you want to send a document say suppose the document written in word or pdf have no problem you can consider simply a text document in a rtf or whatever it is there so, using text editor you can use it. Now, that document will be encrypted from the sender. So, sender will do the encryption and do, do these things sender should use one key it is called the cryptographic key. Similarly, the same document whenever it is received by another receiver it documents will be decrypted that means, converted in the original form and for this conversion called the decryption again we need some keys may be the same key or different key. Now, there is a concept that I am going to discuss about how the same key or different key can be used to use the encryption and decryption are there. So, it is basically the idea of the cryptographic key. So, if you do not have any idea about encryption, decryption and cryptography concept, so you should go through some elementary documents that will give you enough idea. You do not have to do the research in cryptography rather you have to know exactly what is the different methods are there. So, that all these methods can be used and then you have to implement all those methods in a Java programming. Even in the network in the internet also lot of readily available programs are there even including Java also there. You can download these programs, you can use it, you can little bit modify and you can utilize in your program also absolutely there is no harm for that. Now, I will discuss about the steps that you should follow as a first step we have to decide about the cryptographic key. So, there are two type of cryptographic key uh, one is called the symmetric, symmetric cryptographic key means the key which is used for encryption the same key will be used for decryption. So, this is called the symmetric key cryptography in this case both sender and receiver should have this key and an algorithm for both encryption and decryption. On the other hand there is another method that sender will use one key which is pri private to the sender only, sender knows only, but receiver does not know it. On the other hand sender will communicate to his counterpart by a key it is called the public key and using this public key uh, the receiver will be able to encrypt it. Now, there is again different type of algorithms are follow, possible like say RSA algorithm, DSA algorithm like like. So, using all those algorithm the asymmetric key cryptography can be there. Here again you have to know exactly how the key can be generated both the two keys public key and private key those are not same different and they can be shared among the two parties also and all those things are there. And they are again key sharing key generation for asymmetric cryptography there are many protocols for example, Defi Hellman protocol, electric cryptography protocol, DSA protocol so many other protocols are there. So, you have to little bit learn about all those things methods are there techniques are there you have to implement in your Java pro environment. And then you can develop all those things that means, all the algorithms for encryption how the key can be generated how the key can be shared all these things you develop as a program and you know in Java program means is a class all these class files you can store in a package let 
let us give the name to this package as a security. Now, here is an idea about how your framework will work, so that you can develop ultimately a system. I have just given a picture for your own understanding. So, here a sender who wants to send some document, so this is the document. So, basically sender will use a key that is a cryptographic key, whether it is a same or different that you think about, then encryption this algorithm. So, you need how this key can be generated, how this technique can be done. So, these two methods you have to learn it and document can be any document or document or notepad document or PDF document or image document absolutely no issue that algorithm will take care about it. Now, so this algorithm take a document with the help of key will create one file it is called the encrypted file the same file will be sent to the net. So, there is a socket program you can think about. So, socket will take this encrypted file and then socket will send it to the sender uh, receiver. So, this is the receiver, receiver has another socket program at his machine. So, these two machines are different, they are connected through the net. So, these are the two socket on the receiver socket and then server socket will just okay will be used for the communication purpose and any protocol datagram pro protocol or TCPI protocol you can follow to transmit whatever the large document may be. Now, this then they at the receiver end there is a program or algorithm there is a class program java program you can say which basically decrypt the document which has been received. And so, and for this decryption another key will be used cryptographic key may be same or different whatever it is there. So, using this key the algorithm will decrypt it and then finally, it will reach the receive the documents and this document will be opened by the user. Now, so this is the idea about the system that you are you have to develop and you have understood that you have to use it programming core programming and bit networking also involved and also graphical user interface also needs to be there. Now, in the version 1 you can just simply generate the cryptographic key and in the second version you can do is basically the graphical user interface and here how the graphical user interface will look like I have displayed here. So, there will be just this is the view of a GUI windows program and here if you click the upload document it will basically just okay, go to the browser and then it will select the directory and in this directory any file can be selected and then open it. So, it will just display that this file has been successfully selected and then you can keep the encryption algorithm button it is if you click this. So, it will basically follow the alg algorithm and also it will take the cryptographic key and then it will basically uh, create an encrypted file and the encrypted file can be again sent. So, you can see the ID you can give the URL address or local machine number or such thing and if you select it thus it will go to the send uh, receiver. The receiver window that means, this is the program that we have discussed about is a GUI program it can be embedded in a socket and then socket this is the GUI is basically punched in a socket program actually. And this is the another socket program at the receiver end, receiver end once the this program is there then it will basically whatever the message that he has received will be there. So, this is basically one inbox sort of thing. In this inbox he can select one and then he can select this de decrypt. In this uh, okay, once uh, this uh, uh, encryption is there then the decrypt. So, this decrypt will basically convert the encrypted file into uh, decrypt decryption one and then finally, it is open. So, these are the two windows uh, at the server sites uh, at the client uh, sender sites as the receiver sites needs to be implemented. So, here windows programming also socket programming and then the algorithm to be implemented together in at the both end. Now, then the message transmission through network the network uh, implementation is to be there and you know exactly how the networking is possible using this one two sides of client can be there and then once the receiver receives a message it will send an acknowledgement to the sender. Now, all this system that you have developed it is stored in a secure file better you can put into a jar file and this jar file is installable in any other users machine and using installation of this jar file or using this jar file 
any people can send the document to anyone and any people also receive the document sent by someone and then use it as an encryption and decryption also. Even you can plug in with it your email system also. So, before sending or attaching you can encrypt it and then uh, the receiver also can decrypt it using your same program. So, plugging with your own program with the other program also possible that you that is the another lessons that you have to learn about it. Anyway, so forget about the plugin and others you just simply use for a standalone system that is there. Now, let us discuss about another projects uh, is a fifth project and as the name as the title of the project is basically you have little bit idea about uh, the bank transaction while we are discussing about multi threading in this course. It is basically heavily used based on this concept uh, transaction uh, uh, system, but using multi threading, but in addition to this threading also it will consider few more Java programming aspects like GUI programming also, networking and then JDBC. So, this is the another little bit complex program or heavy program compared to the last four programs that we have discussed about because so many skill sets are there. If you do it one by one then it will be basically all these projects are planned in that order only. So, slowly as we go from next project it the complexity will be little bit high. Anyway, so this is the project where you should have the knowledge or learning capability about all these four aspects. Now, let us see what is the idea of the project it is very simple idea as you know so far the banking or any finance organization there is the one server which maintains the database and the database includes the records of all the customers. So, basically customer uh, ID, the account number, the customer name, customer address, uh, accounts and also the history of transaction all these things are there. So, you can plan a database for that, a tables that are relevant to this one and then so you have to prepare one database for this. Anyway, so a bank will maintain all customer records in a database server and then customer can access his accounts online. Online means login password should be there by which the customer will should be first authenticated once the authentication is passed his information will go to the database and accordingly database will give that uh, different facilities or the operations like balance inquiry or if he wants to deposit amount or withdraw amount and everything. So, here actually no physical money is involved the logical some things is there because you have to just practice it how such a things are there and whenever the hardware can be interfaced with this physically it can be there in actual cases the banking system will be there anyway. So, it is like this one now let us see the different steps that you should follow one by one so that you can implement this uh, project very comfortably. So, first you have to develop one database server you can use in this course MySQL other than MySQL, MSQL or Oracle server also anyone no issue you can use it and JDBC also needs to be archived in your program jar file is there available we have already discussed about how the database JDBC connectivity can be done here you can use it. As a programs so far uh, so far the programs are concerned so in this project we have to develop first server sockets server socket means this will basically handle with the uh, database and everything. So, that can be considered as a concurrent server because this server should be ready to receive many requests at the same time and therefore, uh, it can process. As a result of concurrent server you can implement a multi threading concept here. So, several threads are to be executed whenever there is a request received from a client in a distance from the distance location and then there will be another socket programs for the customer. So, the two sockets here is the customer sites. So, customer can be from his own machine or from his own mobile can run these sockets, the sockets will run then uh, through the sockets customer can place the request and then accordingly it will be executed. So, these are the things are there. Now, so here again a little bit GUI components also involved as we see here. Uh, the first GUI interface for the login and password which will look like trivial form as you are familiar to this one you have to do it. So, once the login uh, element is the login ID and then password is entered and then press one. So, if the login is successful it will basically 
con go to the next step that it will basically see that what operation you need. So, after these things it will basically once the login is successful the online banking uh, system will appear to the user and if it is a failure it will deny to access it. Now, here again balance inquiry if we clear the balance inquiry it will just ok because login account number and everything passed after the authentication is done. So, it will uh, ok connect to the server and then that server will basically consult with the database server get the information and then display it here. And then once it is there the next will be may say withdraw. So, similarly withdraw it will basically ask about what amount you want to withdraw if you give in. So, then after the withdraw person is successful it will give a message successful message and then the deposit similarly deposit it is there. If uh, so after the successful deposition it will give the balance and all these things are there. So, you have to just simply develop this kind of screen with dialog box and you have known uh, you have learned all using Java swing also how all those things can be developed. So, it is just event handling mechanism the interface you have to develop and then it will just do the socket programming the networking and then JDBC the database handling are to be there. The, so, this is basically the idea about this one and then once you develop this program and this is a particular program whether you see whether this program is very much robust and then perform perfectly as it should there. So, here are the different tests that you can accomplish so that you can just run the program several sockets server uh, client sockets from the several points and then execute and try to access the database as well as the concurrent server simultaneously. So, here I have mentioned with a single deposit with multiple deposit both deposits as well as withdrawal at the same time and then there are so many other variations that you can do. So, testing you can include in your friend also in your the, the uh, in this uh, testing and then you can do it and then get the result it is really if you can do it and then uh, it will uh, improve your confidence like anything. So, these are the things that we have discussed about the three projects in this session and then best idea would be if you can do alone so do it if you cannot then best idea is that you can do as a team. Right. So, you can include some of your friends into the team and then discuss how to solve it, what to do, what are the difference are there and then you can do it together. First two programs you can do alone, but whenever the complexity is because different components are there better that you can do in a team manner. And then teamwork is very important because whenever you have to uh, use in a software development firm right you have to work as a team. So, from this time onwards you should practice these things. So, thank you for attention. Thank you.